There we go. Yeah, I had a. I've got a. I saw a meme yesterday. I thought it was pretty good. This is what we're living in. Yeah. So I don't know how many of you have seen that film, The Day After Tomorrow with Dennis Quaid. But yeah, that's kind of like what we're living in right now. Uh, just for this was yesterday, you know, this is what that looks like. So yeah, super fun. All righty, let's talk about the Arab Springs. Okay. So this occurred in 2011 and 2012. Okay. Um, and this starts in the country of Tunisia. Okay, this dark blue country up here. Okay, now you're going to learn more about this in your Ed Puzzle, uh, but I just want to give you a a broad stroke idea of what the Arab Springs is because it is kind of a confusing topic because there's so many countries involved. Okay, um, so in 2011 in Tunisia, all right, there is uh, obviously I wouldn't say obviously there is low employment. OK, so the amount of people without a job is really high. OK, so you got to find ways to make money by any means necessary. OK, it is not a government that helps its people out all that much. Um, and they're very strict with you know how things are run, especially within um, the cities. OK, um, now. With that being said, 2011, there's a man um, who is selling fruits and vegetables. And you'll learn more about them um, when you watch your Ed Puzzle. I don't want to talk exactly about what's on the Ed Puzzle, but he's selling fruits and vegetables. And the police come up to him and ask for his licensing to sell fruits and vegetables on the street. Okay. He doesn't have this, but he says he offers to pay a fine. You know, he understands that he should have had it, uh, but I'll pay the fine to, uh, you know, basically, I'll take the consequence. All right. Well, the police say no. Like, we got to confiscate everything. They confiscate all his fruits and vegetables, all of his goods, everything that he uses to sell his, uh, you know, his goods. Well, obviously now, you know, you don't have anything to sell. You can't make any money. Um, you know, you're, you have to start back to, you know, square one. So he's obviously very upset. He, you know, he doesn't have anything, you know, very little money as it is. To show his pr a protest against the government, he goes to the front of the government building um, in the city he was located. And he lights himself on fire. Okay? Um, and this is to protest basically a corrupt government that will not take care of its citizens, even when they're in dire need. Okay? Now, in 2011, you know, this is where like Facebook is getting big. OK, this is, you know, Facebook's kind of like, you know, it's still pretty popular, but it's mainly for older generations. Okay, well, 2011, you know, Facebook was, you know, where it's at. Okay, uh, this is where what all the younger generation was using. All right, and this is the first time that social media has played a major role in, you know, congregating and organizing people in large numbers. Okay, so Facebook was used to organize these massive marches, riots, you know. There were some that were civil disobedient and very peaceful, but there were also some very violent ones where, you know, people were killed. OK, whether it be government officials or the citizens of the country, you know, kind of dependent on the area that you're looking at. Remember, we're uh, we're looking at Tunisia right now, but any color that's shaded okay, um, played a part in the Arab Springs. All right. Now. And this begins in Tunisia and Tunisia, you know, is a success story, but this also, you know, kind of uh, spreads throughout the rest of the region. OK. And if you look to the right, Libya. OK. So if we have Tunisia here in the dark blue, Libya over here. OK. They obviously spark um, protests against the government. OK. And the leader of Libya at the time was Gaddafi. Okay? He was a military dictator and, you know, he, uh, he, how do I say this? I wouldn't say that he was the worst leader, but he definitely was not the best because basically he manipulated the tribes to fight against each other so he could stay in power. But what I will say is that he kept an orderly country. 
Okay. It, well, there wasn't open civil war in Libya while he ruled. Now, when these protests happened, okay, uh, Gaddafi was assassinated. And, you know, this is where we get the, the, uh, the problem, the idea of, you know, what happens when assassination occurs in a, in a country that does not have a stable government. Okay. You know, if there's one person that is holding the entire country together and all of a sudden he's gone, what happens? You know, that's the big question. And this is what happens to Libya. Okay. Libya, Gaddafi assassinated. All of a sudden, all these people are trying to fight for the top. They want to be the leader of Libya. All right. And it's not so much for the good of the people or the good of the country, but to say that I am the one sole ruler of the country. You know, so this isn't something that we want, all right? But this is a repercussion of the assassination, okay? In Libya now has fallen into a state of, you know, yes, it's failing, but it's divided as well, you know, controlled by two different governments. The eastern uh, portion of the government or eastern portion of the country is controlled by a man called uh, General Haftar, okay, who... He is a military general, obviously, all right, but he wants to be the you know, sole ruler of Libya, okay? But then we have the Western government, which is supported by the United Nations, all right? And, you know, they're, you know, as of in recent weeks, they have actually come to an agreement in the Western government that they are going to, you know, um, you know, elect an official leader, okay, make steps towards reuniting Libya. But the big question is, you know, how are you going to reunite Libya when you have General Haftar in the eastern portion of the country that has thousands of soldiers? You know, what is going to be the trade-off? So Libya is in, you know, at risk of going into a civil war. You know, there's already open violence throughout the entire country, uh, but that doesn't mean there's civil war yet. You know, there's just no stable security in the region. Okay. Um, in Egypt, you know, much more civil. Okay. The protests occurred. Yeah, there was some violence, but the leader of Egypt stepped down, you know, pretty, you know, um, willingly okay, um, for the situation that he was in. And they do have a semi democratic government, okay, um, you know, with some, you know, uh, stipulations, okay? uh, just like Sudan and um, Algeria, Morocco, okay, Mauritania. Uh, these countries, yes, they are considered dem democracies, but their governments are very strict. You know, usually the most of the leaders are handpicked by who's in power. You know, um, yeah, considered a democracy because of the label of the government and how their government's set up, but that doesn't always mean that's how the country operates. And then we have Syria, which is in, you know, recovery mode. They just they're going through a civil war, just getting out of a civil war. Um, so Syria is now rebuilding Iraq. You know, Iraq has been through it, you know, uh, between the Arab Springs, United States being invading Iraq. You know, Iraq has been very uh, haven't been blessed with the best situation. Um, you know, Iraq is you know, historically been a place of violence uh, and, you know, it, it hasn't gotten much better. Uh, in the past couple of years, I would say it's kind of leveled off, but I wouldn't say it's progressing. Okay. Um, so, you know, these countries in the dark red and then the kind of the pinkish color, you know, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Libya, all these countries are struggling to say the least. Okay. Um, so a lot of, uh, United Nations help Peace Corps, okay. These types of organizations are play a vital role in being able to help the people living in these four countries because it is such a, you know, with war, you basically disrupt the food chain, okay. The food supply chain. All right. Um, because then you can't distribute food products to the people throughout the country. So violence plays you know, several different roles. Yeah, yeah, violence itself kills people, but also it disrupts how daily life functions and then you can't feed your citizens. So there's a lot of things that go into the Arab Springs. 
and I can't cover it all in 10, 15 minutes. Um, but just understand, Arab Springs was a 2011, 2012. Okay, it involved all the Arab countries pictured um, on the image. Okay, started in Tunisia. Okay, um, with man that uh, is upset with the government because he confiscated his fruits and vegetables. He wants to protest against the corrupt government. Lights himself on fire in front of the government building. This sparks a massive effort to reform governments into a more democratic government. Okay. And that goes for Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, all these countries are trying to reform into more democratic countries. Now this didn't always, wasn't always successful. Okay. Tunisia is your one success story, Lebanon, but, um, we're not going to really talk about them right now. Okay. Um, but you also have some failed states that result because of the Arab Springs, like Libya, Yemen, Iraq, Syria. Okay. Because of either whether it be assassinations or outright civil war broke out, okay, causing these countries to fall in a state of crisis. Okay. So, Arab Springs, an effort to reform governments into more democratic governments. That's the main idea of what the Arab Springs is. Okay. All right talked enough real quick you get two assignments for today and you should be able to get them done my hope is a half hour if it takes you a little bit longer than that so be it all right but uh, I'm giving you I'm gonna try to give you an hour to get this stuff done okay first one Middle East countries map I am sharing right I hope so yeah all right we just looked at the map of the Middle East okay this is Western Asia Okay, there's 19 countries. Okay, we include Egypt with this because they share so much in terms of culture with you know countries like Jordan, Israel, Saudi Arabia. Okay, uh, there's a lot of cultural connections between these. They don't always get along, but you know Egypt is a lot of times lumped into the Middle East as well. Um, okay, make sure you get your 80 percent. Make sure you complete the entire map. Okay. Um, Screenshot, attach, submit, okay? Your second one is an Ed Puzzle, okay? I purposely chose a shorter video because we were gonna talk about it in class, okay? Uh, this is over the Arab Springs, okay? A lot of it's going to be review, so this will allow you to go through uh, the video a little bit faster because if you're paying attention at all in the uh, this discussion, all right, you should uh, recognize a lot of these questions. There is one question over what is a martyr, okay? If you don't know what a martyr is already, okay, Google search it, okay? And I'll tell you, okay, that's the one term that's not going to be defined in the video that you're gonna have to open up a new tab and research what a martyr is, okay? Just put in definition of a martyr, okay? Uh, some of you may have heard it already. If not, you know, this is what this whole idea of asking this question is, okay? All right. Do we have any questions right now? Okay. Told you I was going to try to keep it to a half hour. I am that? three minutes short of that. So they're pretty good on my timing. Okay. Okay. If you do not have any questions, Okay. Um, you're free to go. Email me if anything comes up and you don't understand how to complete anything. So I will see you guys next week.